you know, some people might call it karma. But anyway, uh, I had a surrogate sister. And uh, I still have that same surrogate sister. And she introduced me to a young lady. And uh, need I say that she was beautiful. I mean, she was beautiful. She had the hips. Uh, she had everything that the average guy would look for in a mate. And I was very, very much interested in who I was, to be honest, uh, and I always apply pressure. Uh, that's my that's my motto, apply pressure. But she was very beautiful. Anyways, uh, this was a time where I needed something from someone in the trust factor. That's what I'm touching up on, telling people, uh, never judge a face or a book by its cover. You need to get to know people. Uh, I would take this girl out and take my surrogate sister out. Uh, take them out together. And me and her never really got together to actually uh, go after each other sexually. Uh, I was interested in her and she was interested in me. But out of respect uh, for this woman, uh, it, never, it never happened because... Uh, some things went to happening when I was coming across a whole lot of money. I mean, lots of money. I mean, tons of money. And uh, by me being so far away from home, I had no one that I could trust. At least I thought I didn't have anyone to trust at that time. Uh, to be honest, I was really trying to impress her. Not that I would go after it that way. She just seems like, she just seemed like the type that I could trust. Uh, she built my trust. I earned her respect. Uh, she would see me bring so much money. And eventually I came to her again and told her I needed someone to uh, to play the mother goose. I need you to sit on this money for me because soon I would be moving my parents, my mother, I meant uh, my, my sisters and brother up. And, uh, I will be able to take this away. So anyway, that money got kind of large. Uh, she was always in awe of my hustle. She was always in awe of me as a person too, cause like I say, uh, since I came out of my adolescent stages uh, in life, I was always a braggadocia kind, uh, loud, big bravado, uh, plenty hard, and deep pockets. Uh, I started to let her keep the money, as I mentioned already. Uh, and I would give her money, pay her rent, uh, make sure everything was straight with her and the kids. But she, she always let me know how much she liked me and I liked her as well. I mean, she was a doll. What a doll she was. And uh, I let her know that, hey, you know, I already bought the house. I got everything set up. I furnished everything. I'm moving my family up, so I'm going to be able to take this cash uh, away and move it. And me and you still could be straight or whatever. I'm just going to need to move the cash. So anyway, uh, with so many thousands of dollars in, in, in play, uh, I left a week before uh, to go take some money home to my mama uh, for them to get things together to get ready to move. And uh, I took some more money to a few friends. Uh, I went and bought me a nice piece to drop around my neck or whatever. But anyway, uh, I took out 20000 of the money. And I left, uh, I think, about 12000 Uh When I came back from south, from down south, to come back to where I reside, I went to go put about four or $5,000 back into the money. I remember knocking on her door or whatever. She greeted me like she always greeted me with a tight hug, you know, and uh, you know, out of respect again. I never I never slapped on the ass. I never did nothing. I just always kept it cordial. For that one time, it was strictly business. You understand? And uh she had a big huge oak dresser. And what I would do is lift up the huge dresser and she would swipe her hand underneath to get the money. I had the money in a Ziploc bag. I lift the dress up. She swiped. No money. 
So I say, hey, what's up? I lift it up higher. She swiped again. She say, I don't see it. So I move the whole dresser in. I got enough strength to move this whole entire big turtle top uh, dresser. I moved the dresser. Boom, the money was gone. So I sat on her bed and said something to her that I use on my Facebook page today. I am exactly the opposite of what you might think of me. And at that very moment, sitting there talking to her, knowing that those $12,000 were gone, and I was about to move my mom them up, and me spending so much money south, uh, I called a few people because I didn't think at that, at that time that she actually did it, but I kind of had an inclination of her doing it. I call these guys, boom, something happened. And a light went off in my head to just go all out. You know, I was about to move my mom them up. How am I gonna move my mom them up? I had like $4,000 in my pocket. Uh, I had uh, 32 to start. Anyway, uh, I end up doing something that I later regretted. Uh, I took some guys out and, and a lot of stuff happened, but it wasn't nothing, a loss of life, but it was real violent. I mean, it was violent enough to where uh, we was all covered in blood. Uh, we was, we was, we was looking like somebody opened a can of tomato paste and just threw it inside uh, the car or whatever. Everybody was bloody. Uh, my hands were trembling from holding the gun for so long or whatever. And these guys begged me to tell me that they didn't do that. Okay, fast forward years later, uh, I was incarcerated and uh, I saw a familiar face. And this familiar face was the sister of the girl who money, who, who house I had the money. And she told me straight up, she said, hey, I heard what type of guy you, you, you is and uh, that you're a family man. She said, I need you to know that my sister did that. I need you to know that my sister did that. And uh, that was a combination of a real adrenaline rush for me because I had started to think that. Uh, but I didn't have, I didn't actually know that her and her baby father conspired to take that money because she knew that once my mother and sisters and brother came, that that money wasn't going to no longer be in, in, in her possession. So uh, the moral of this story is don't trust nobody, especially somebody that puts on a facade like there's something when they're really not. She turned out to be the biggest snake. But again, this also was a learning lesson for me because guess what? 20 years earlier, I took almost the same amount of money from somebody and it turned into war. And I don't need to say who it is, but me and the guy, uh, we're good friends now. And we went to war about that for years. So uh, things do come back. If you indulging in a certain thing, things do come back. So with that being said, make sure you don't trust somebody with a pretty face. Make sure you don't trust a handsome man that you think that's, uh, you know, somebody to be trustworthy. Make people earn your respect. Make people earn your trust. Make people earn the things that you work for in your life or whatever. And make sure you don't never buckle under no type of pressure, even though it might be pressure applied. All right.